Okay, this is going to be one hell of a story. I'm just telling you because it blew my mind and it's going to blow yours. This is when I was driving for Uber, working on that book, the unofficial Uber partner handbook. I was finishing up on the Buckhead run was pretty close to home and I was going to pack it in and I got that one last call. It's about 12 o'clock, 1230. And typically that's, you know, if, if you drive for Uber, you already know this. Typically you have the, we're leaving the bars one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. You have those droves of people who are going home. They're too inebriated. So I thought that's what this call was. And I was like, ah, maybe it'll be a short trip. Well, I get the address and I'm heading to the spot and I get there and it's an apartment complex. Don't know how they do it now, but in the beginning, if you didn't have someone who was pretty clued in to how Uber worked, you could be waiting for a long time. So I immediately called the guy and it was a guy that wanted to ride. So I thought, well, this is, where, this is where it gets a little weird. This debauchery happened on a Saturday night. It was roughly 1.30 in the morning and I was getting ready to pack it in. I got that last call. Usually that time of night, somebody who's so inebriated and they just need to ride home. That's the danger zone when you can have people blowing chunks in the backseat of your ride. I was a little hesitant but I said, what the hell, I'll go there. When I get the call, it's a guy. So in my mind, I'm expecting a guy. Now hold that in your memory banks. So I go to the spot and it's an apartment complex. I don't know how they do it now, but back then, people who live in apartment complexes weren't that considerate. So I just developed a policy of immediately calling them as soon as I hit the gate. What's going on? When are you showing up? So on and so forth. Well, I call this guy. Once again, it's a guy. And this is what he says. Uh, yo, man, uh, yeah, I, it ain't me. You know, this is my Uber account, right? This is my account, but uh, no, it's not me. I'm having you pick up a female. When you have someone who's ordering a ride for someone, it can get a little dicey. And it always was kind of weird because you never know if it was going to go funky. So my spotty senses were all tingling and shit. What the hell is going to happen? What the hell is going to happen? So I roll with it and then he's... Yo, uh, man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, tell you what, what's your number? And I will have her, the female, call you. And y'all can work that out and, you know, you can set that up. So maybe 90 seconds later, I get this voice that sounds like a kid. Hello, how are you? You're the Uber man. I'll be right out. Give me five minutes. At this point, I'm like, oh, shit. When a woman tells you, give me five minutes, it's 10, it's 15, it's 20. I don't care if you think that's sexist. You know it's true. So fortunately, when I started Uber, I always rolled with two phones. And I started playing games, and I just found myself a place to be. And approximately 19.5 minutes later, she comes out. Now, I went ahead and started the meter. Because like I said, it's 1.30 in the morning. This is the, the room or the environment for fuckery. Anything can happen. So I was just like, hey, you know, if, if they if it gets a charge back or whatever, something happens, fine, I'll deal with it. So she gets in smelling like peaches and strawberries. She's on the phone with one of her girlfriends. Apparently someone that she had just left the club. Yeah, I don't know about this. I know you told me it was going to be okay, but this is my first time. And I'm hearing the conversation and she's intentionally being opaque. She's trying to say something without saying it. In my mind, is this girl a hoe? That's the, that, I mean, seriously, she came out. All right, it's 1.30. She came out in this tight little dress, six inch heels, and based upon my spotty sense, no underwear, none on top, none on bottom. 
Yes, she appeared to be 20 something in extremely firm and all important areas. In her mentor, because from the gist of the conversation, the girl that she was on the phone with had done this before. Because I was thinking that this was a booty call. And I mean, if you think about it, Uber, because that's going to be another story, because I've done that. I know for a fact it was booty calls. But this one was something a little special. It's a little different. She was talking on the phone to her mentor, trying to speak opaquely in code, but I had already figured it out. It's 1.30 in the morning. She's smelling like strawberries and peaches in a skin tight dress that's showing all of her goodies. So she's back there and after she gets off the phone, then she becomes really chatty. This is so nice. This is so roomy back there. Okay, she was five foot nothing, so anything would have been roomy for her. She's the type of girl that could be in the back seat of one of those Porsche and have plenty of room to just stretch out. So we're riding. Now, this is a long way. It's a $60 ride. That's how far away it is because he hit it uh, when it has surged a little bit. So we're get, we go to the subdivision. It's a nice subdivision. I estimate the homes to be 750 to 1.2, probably higher. So we get up to the gate, and it's a gated community, and there's humans at the gate. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. Yes, there were real organic life forms, carbon-based life forms at the gate. So I pull up, and I talk to this guy who was just like, well, welcome to blah, 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 and what is your business here? And I tell him, then he goes in, gets on the phone, calls dude, and I hear a dude on the phone, yeah, yeah, that's my dude, that's my dude, that's my dude. So the, the carbon-based life form comes back out, he looks at me, he looks in the back seat, strawberry and peaches, she's waving and shit like, hello, and he's just <laughs> laughing because he immediately read the situation. He opened up the gate, we go in, wind around the neighborhood, I mean, just just nice neighborhoods. It, it's, it's, it's early in the morning and we are just rolling around and about five minutes later, we pull up to the crib. Now this is what's really, really strange about this crib. Very upscale neighborhood with carbon-based life forms who were at the gate. I think dude had a gun, I'm not sure. We're rolling around and we're up to this house and the house is pitch black. It's just completely pitch black. And then all of a sudden, the lights flicker on. The uh, lights near the garage. There's two torch lamps, and they go on and off, on and off, and on and off. And then her phone rings, and he's like, oh, that's him. So I pull up closer, and the house is still pitch black. And then the garage door, door starts going up slowly. She gets out, right? And she got in a little tight dress, a little six inch heels, but she's walking kind of like Scooby-Doo and Shaggy when they're like going around the corner. She's kind of like tiptoeing a little bit because she's never been there before. It's really clear that she's never been there before and dude did not come out. All he did was flick the lights and let the garage door open. He wasn't in the garage because when the door went up, I could see and he was by the door going into the house and he was like doing this <laughs> dude did not come out i didn't see who the hell he was i googled it later i know who it is and he's a prominent person and yeah he's married oh yeah essentially i'm surprised he didn't tell me to turn the lights out as i made my approach so she gets out and she goes in she kind of looks back at me and i look at her and then i just hit in the trip that's just one of many but this was what i believe and go ahead and put in the comments what you think went down i believe that this was a call girl and this was her first trick that's what i think what went down and i was part of that i facilitated fuckery and got paid for it all right Tell me what you think, put it in the comments. And if you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe to the blog shop.thehustlemindsetproject.com.
a lot of stories, a lot of commentary, stuff will be going there. So you, you definitely want to get there. And with that, I'll see you in the next session.